So a couple weeks ago, I posted this video on my TikTok about my mastering chain that I use for all of my songs being a DIY independent musician, and it did pretty well. So I wanted to make kind of like a separate video going a little bit more in depth about my mastering chain and how I approach mastering in, in my whole process for all of my songs. So I remember when I first got into, you know, making my own music and releasing my own songs, and I remember seeing mastering as like this weird, you know, nebulous bucket term that I really did not understand. And, you know, how a song gets from the production stage to the mixing stage to the mastering stage and then the final stage ready for release. Um, I read a book about it. I've watched countless YouTube videos about it. But I just want to say, you know, at the beginning of this video that I am not a mastering engineer. You know, if you want a more technical, you know, in-depth video about mastering, um, there's a channel called Sage Audio and they make some really cool videos. So I definitely recommend checking them out, but do not watch this video if you're looking for like real advice. I don't know. I'm, I guess it's, I could offer like a more practical viewpoint for people who are just trying to do it themselves and who really care about their music, but don't necessarily have, you know, the 200, $300 to shell out per song to get their songs mixed and mastered. So this is my chain that I use. Obviously, um, you know, you can do your own research and, and, and do what's best for you. Uh, there's a lot of free options out there, free substitutions for some of the plugins that I use in my chain. And um, just do what works for you. Do what works with your, with your budget and, you know, educate yourself and learn about it and, you know, go from there. But Anyway, so here we have this project open from um, the most recent song that I put out called Everything Sucks. And uh, it's, a, it's an amazing song. It's an amazing beat. Um, I loved it, obviously. That's why I put it out. And you can totally listen to it if you feel like it on all streaming platforms. But I was just going to use this song as kind of an example. So um, we're talking about mastering. So that's after the mixing process is done. And the mixing process essentially consists of just leveling your tracks, EQing your tracks, compressing, compressing your tracks when necessary. You don't have to compress everything, obviously. And then just panning and adding effects. So that is the mixing process as far as I'm concerned. And what you're aiming for with the mixing process is kind of getting your song around, um, around the negative six area and then from there mastering will push it up to the levels that are appropriate for releasing your song on streaming platforms and and such so i'm just gonna let you listen to the song as it is right now everything sucks and i'm feeling like shit Days like this make it hard to exist Too much to do, man, I got a whole list And I ain't a right brother, but I'm jumping off the cliff Everything sucks and I'm feeling like shit Days like this make it hard to exist Too much to do, man, I got a whole list And I ain't a right brother, yeah Okay, so that's what we got so far. Um, I got a lot of the information for, for what to put in my mastering chain through the Sage Audio channel because they are, you know, they or him, I don't know if it's one guy, is just an absolute wizard. So um, I have a lot of stuff here on my chain, but um, the most important thing for me is this level meter right here on the side, and that just helps me see like where everything is levels wise. And then I also have a a spectrum meter just to uh sucks and I'm feeling like shit Take just a good a good like feel on the on the waveform and how everything's looking so I'm gonna start from the bottom um this is after everything has been mixed and put together as I said okay so the first thing that I put in my chain is going to be a mid-side EQ and I'm using Infinity EQ here, which is a great EQ plugin. But what I'm doing here is um, I have this low cut enabled, this high pass filter enabled, and then it's switched to um, it's switched to the side mode. So this is only being applied to the the side image. But um, what this is essentially doing is it's cutting all of the 
low frequencies out of the side and it's it's only letting the low frequencies go through the center and in after everything's applied that's just going to give a much more tighter uh cohesive sound to the lower frequencies the kick and the bass and everything and it just cleans everything up and it makes it sound um really good as i said i barely know what i'm talking about so just hang with me next i have the the shadow hills mastering compressor um this is a very famous compressor this is uh by plugin this is a an emulation by plugin alliance which is pretty good um with this with any plugin that you have don't be afraid to read the manual the manual is um obviously it's amazing <clears throat> and um they put it together for a reason so it's important to to read it and understand what all the you know the knobs and the dials are because like look at this look at this stuff this is this is insane look how many little buttons they are i don't i don't know like I get confused just looking at this. I start shaking in my boots. So it's not as complicated as it looks. Um, and that's why reading the manual is so important. So, and what we're doing here with this plugin is we're just gluing them everything together, gluing the mix together a little bit. And that's very important in a mastering chain. So mastering is the most subtle use of the mastering compressor. Dial in one dB of optical gain reduction and two dB of discrete gain reduction. So that happens right here. This is the threshold for the discrete and this is the threshold for the optical. And um, what I will do is I will uh, pull this up until I see over here, this is the optical um, gain reduction view meter, whatever. Um, I'll pull this up until I get about negative one right here, as you can see. And then um, for the discrete, Pull that down until you get about negative two, as they said. Ducks and I'm feeling like shit. Days like this make it hard to exist. So much to do, man, I got a whole list. And I ain't a right brother, but I'm jumping off the cliff. Everything sucks and I'm feeling like shit. Days like this make it hard to exist. Okay, and then from there, I'm just going to loop this little section so it keeps playing. And then from there, it says select a ratio of 1.2 to 1 an attack time of 30 milliseconds and recover time of 0.1. So um, we're going to do the discrete. So this is the ratio right here. This is how much it's getting compressed. And we're going to put that to 1.2, as it said, 1.2 to 1. And then the discrete attack is going to be at 30. And the discrete um, recover is going to be at 0.1, I believe, if that's what that says. And then it says set the sidechain filter to in and select the transformer matrix to taste. So that is this right here, the sidechain guy and we're gonna set that to in and then um this is the matrix and you kind of just push this up and down until you find one that you like i had it right here um and then you play with the gain until you make up the um the amount that you were reducing it until bring it back up to that next level because that's how you make it make it sound good ducks and i'm feeling like shit days like this make it hard to exist so much to do man i got a whole list and i ain't a right brother but i'm jumping off the cliff everything sucks and i'm feeling like shit days like this make it hard to okay so that's pretty much that and then from there um for this song i did something different but usually i will do a smooth operator and you know i didn't buy soothe obviously if i had the money i would have bought soothe because that's um like the best plugin that you can get in terms of harmonic uh suppression but this is kind of also good it's just a little bit cheaper it's called smooth operator um and this is a resonance suppressor so it's going to find certain frequencies that are peaking out and it's just going to suppress those or bring up certain frequencies that you want um i use the i'll either switch between the master bus chill or the master bus feel good plugins or presets and then i'll tweak with uh i'll tweak these options until i kind of get where i want it to get to be ducks and i'm feeling like shit days like this make it hard to exist so much to do man i got a whole list and i ain't a right brother but i'm jumping off the cliff and to me that's just kind of like bringing it up a little bit making it brighter and um helping the low end a bit um, that's what I'll typically do after the, um, Shadow Hills Mastering Compressors, the Smooth Operator, 
but I did not do that for this song. I did the Poltec trick for this song. So um, I don't exactly know how to de describe this off the top of my head, but look up the Poltec, uh, Poltec trick, basically. And you're basically boosting uh, some of the low frequencies and then attenuating some of the low frequencies. And that is something that a lot of people, you know, mastering engineers, mixing engineers will use this plugin for just to get a really fat low end. So as you, I'll do a little like side by side. Ducks and I'm feeling like shit. Days like this make it hard to exist. So much to do, man, I got a whole list. And I ain't a right brother, but I'm jumping off the cliff. Everything. Like to me, that just gives the low end like a lot more punch. So that's what I did for this is that pull tech, uh, the UAD pull tech. So next I do um, ozone elements nine. Uh, I don't have the new one, the new ozone, but this is the one that I use and it's fine. It's great. So what you can do is go to a preset. I like these pre I like these presets a lot. Um, just go to all purpose mastering and then uh, smooth limiting stereo clarity is good. Uh, what's the other one? Clean limiting is also good, but just play around with those until you find something that you like, um, the imager settings. And then sometimes I'll use the EQ settings in here, but that's what we have for this. And then we can kind of hear like before and after. Ducks and I'm feeling like shit. Days like this make it hard to exist. So much to do, man. I got a whole list and I ain't a right brother, but I'm jumping off the cliff. All right. So. This is bringing it up a little bit more. Obviously, it's limiting it, and then the imager, it's kind of widening the stereo image, so it's giving it some width. But that is a, a very fire plug-in. And then um, next in the chain is going to be the Oxford Inflator. And I can actually make a more in-depth video about how to do this. But um, essentially what you're gonna do, for me, I found when you first put this plug-in on, what you're supposed to do is take the clip off, then adjust the input to the point where it's just almost clipping and then um, turn it back on and raise the effect um, from zero all the way up to uh, the, I think the guy that I was listening to was like, there's no reason to not have it 90 to 100, but just do it as much as you want. And the Oxford Inflator is a very uh, cool plugin that a lot of people use to just bring up and um, bring up the, the volume of the song without adding any more distortion. So it's a clean way of making your song a lot louder. Obviously, if you want a more in-depth uh, description of what it is and what it does, I'm not your guy, but it's really cool and it does work. So uh, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So this curve right here, this is kind of the, the flavoring knob. It, <laughs> if you pull it down, it's gonna make it warmer. If you pull it up, it's gonna make it the tone a little bit brighter. I have it down here. And then you bring the, the output to about negative one. Um, and then you can definitely hear, we'll do a side by side again so you can um, hear what that sounds like. Ducks and I'm feeling like shit. Days like this make it hard to exist. So much to do, man, I got a whole list. And I ain't a right brother, but I'm jumping off the cliff. Okay, so you can see over here, it's not like boosting it too much, but you can just hear how much louder it makes it, which is crazy to me. So um, this is a great plugin, um, definitely worth the money. Uh, next, and if you look into where you're supposed to put it in the chain, um, I it says before the um, before the limiter in your mastering chain. So that's where I have it right here is, is before the... Um, next plugin that I have in the chain, which is the L3 Ultra Maximizer, which is a great plugin from Waves. Um, what you're doing here, the best way to kind of use this plugin is um, you're going to start obviously with um, it in, in the initialized state. And then this button right here, uh, this controls both the threshold and the out ceiling. So what you're going to do is you're going to play the song. And then you're going to drag this down until you see um, a little bit of attenuation over here, just a couple dB, somewhere in between 0 and 3. And that's what you're looking for is some, uh, some attenuation. And then I'll show you what to do after that. So. Ducks and I'm feeling like shit. Days like this make it hard to exist. So much to do, man, I got a whole list. And I ain't a right brother, but I'm jumping off the cliff. Everything sucks and I'm feeling like shit. Days like... All right, that might be a little bit much. I'm gonna put it up a little bit, but 
that's what we're looking at 4.6 and then the next step is to raise the out ceiling to the level that you want it at and this is interesting this point right here but like where and i recommend again i'm not your guy i don't know everything about this but where you want your song to be peaking at so you can send it out to um all the mastering services so you should shoot for negative one. When I first started, I was like, all right, you got to squash that shit into the top. You know, you want it to be as loud as possible. And that's actually not true because the streaming services, they do a lot of different things with the, um, with the leveling on their service. So it's important to keep that in mind. But when you're setting the output setting on your limiter at the end of your chain, you want it to be at like negative one. And there are reasons for that that I don't really know how to explain, but that's how it is so i'll do a little side by side with just with the limiter on ducks and i'm feeling like shit days like this make it hard to exist so much to do man i got a whole list and i ain't a right brother but i'm jumping off the cliff so yeah you can really hear that limiter at work just bringing up the the overall you know perceived loudness of the track by so much so the last thing that I put in the chain is Fresh Air, and this is a free plugin from um, Slate uh, Digital, which is a great company. Um, I just do a little bit of mid air and a little bit of the high air, and then it's important after that because this is boosting a little bit, is that you want to trim it by you know around negative one dB just to compensate for the the gain that you've um, added in there. So we can hear a little side by side. Sucks and I'm feeling like shit. Days like this make it hard to exist. Too much to do, man. I got a whole list, and I ain't a right brother, but I'm jumping off the cliff. It is crazy. Like this is a free plugin, and just to like hear, it just turns. It's literally fresh air. It, it just turns on the fresh air of the track, and you can hear kind of in the presence of the track. It just, it just like makes it sound a lot more crisp. And we love that. So um, there's a couple really cool things that I want to put you on with. And one of them is Span. And um, Span, Span is a very cool free plugin. And this is what um, like professional, you know, audio engineers will use because it's, it's very, it has a lot of, you, you know, it has a lot of different tools and ways to um, get a good view on what what's going on with your audio spectrum. Sucks and I'm feeling like shit. Days like this make it hard to exist. So much to do, man. I got a whole list, and I ain't a right brother, but I'm jumping off the cliff. To me, that looks pretty balanced. Again, if someone is more professional, they might say different, but um. Sucks and I'm feeling like shit. Day you can see that it's it's nothing's like too crazy peeking out but um that is a very helpful one span and the other one that i want to show you is this the ulean loudness meter freeze so this is also very cool and very useful it's measuring the lufs which is a different form of uh, metering it's different than um db it's different than DBFS. Uh, I barely know what I'm talking about, but it's it's just like a more accurate way to see how loud, how the perceived loudness of how, of your track. So there's a specific LUFS that you should look for when you're sending it to streaming sites. Um, I think it's around like 13 or 14. Again, I have no idea what I'm talking about. Once more. So, but. Ducks and I'm feeling like shit. Days like this make it hard to exist. So much to do, man. I got a whole list and I ain't a right brother, but I'm jumping. So that might be a little bit low for what I'm looking for, but um, this is a very helpful tool as well. Learning how to use it, learning how to implement changes in your track before you send it off to uh, streaming sites. So this is very helpful again, and I'll include the the link to Span and the link to Ulean in the in the description. But that is what I do for my mastering chain. Another really helpful plugin for mastering is the J37 tape emulation from Waves. I didn't include it in this specific song, but usually I will put it like somewhere after the after Ozone. And it just to run it through this gives it a lot of warmth and character. And especially if you're looking for like more of a vintage lo-fi sound, um, this is your guy. And definitely tape emulation. Uh, tape saturation plugins are great for a mastering chain as sage audio will tell you so yeah 
All right, guys, so I hope you got something from this video. I know it's a very like surface level, not too in-depth view of, um, of a mastering chain and of the inner workings of the mastering process, but um, I hope it's helpful to you. I know it would have been helpful to myself if I saw this before I really knew how to mix and master, but um, I wish you the best of luck in your um, musician mastering DIY journey. If you thought this video was helpful, please make sure to like and subscribe. Um, any links to uh, the song so you can stream it and um, follow me on Spotify are going to be in the description. But yeah, I hope y'all are having an amazing day out there. Peace out.